Hey guys, welcome to Connecting the Dots, the podcast where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. A short while ago, I posted a video where I connected the dots on which undiscussed features and technologies we can expect Tesla Cybertruck to have. I showed things like unique AI controlled brakes, special steering, a unique diamond mode for tank turns, and many other advanced technologies and features, most of which weren't discussed elsewhere. If you haven't watched the video, there's a link in the card above and in the video description. The video created some buzz and received many comments from Cybertruck fans, some of which were extremely eye-opening. So before moving to the part two video in which I'll provide an engineering analysis of less known Cybertruck design traits, here's a quick video in which I'll share some of the more interesting comments and discuss their implications on Cybertruck's design and capabilities. Elon promised us that Cybertruck will be an insane technology bandwagon. And while creating the first video, I realized that if what I saw is true, he really wasn't exaggerating. Upon reading the comments now, I realized that even my own imagination didn't cover it all. There is more, much more, waiting for us in Tesla's store. Now buckle up and get ready, because Cybertruck is never boring. Maxwell Smart wrote several points. Let me address them one by one. Individual brake control for off-road would be game-changing. I'm not an off-roader myself, so I didn't think of it while making the video, but I guess it is. Sensify brakes are controlled by AI, so there's a question of whether they'll train it for off-road scenarios, but if they do, it truly would be game-changing. I wish they would also use a one or more of the bumpers as an air tank, so that you can actually get some CFM without needing to locate a big tank somewhere. Onboard air is nice, but without CFM, not so usable. CFM means cubic feet per minute, which means how much air the system can supply per minute. And Maxwell is completely right, as this is extremely important for Cybertruck's promise to enable powering air pressure tools, such as nail guns. Most air tools require between 70 and 90 PSI, and checking the specs of inflatable air shocks, such as these Gabriel hijackers for pickups, we see they're at a range of 25 to a max of 200 PSI. So we have the right pressure, but do we have enough air for continuous use? A pneumatic stapler needs around 0.3 CFM and a nail gun around 2.8 CFM, but these are intermittent use tools. Continuous use tools need more air volume, so a constantly spinning sander might have a CFM requirement of 8. A compressor with such a flow rate would be overkill for Cybertruck, so it's much easier to provide a larger air tank. As Sandy Monroe showed, Plaid Model S uses its front crossbar as an air tank, on top of many other uses. Unless they use the same part for Cybertruck, I'm pretty sure they'll provide a larger tank, and the front bumper seems like a great place to put it. Great idea. Maxwell and several others also commented on how suitable Tesla Cybertruck would be for right-hand drive markets. If steering, braking, and acceleration is decoupled, then you should be able to slide the driver position from left to right, making every car independent of country. Mark commented, steer by wire should make the Cybertruck much easier to convert to right-hand drive markets. And EV Bike Dude added, they could even give us a yoke that can slide to either side. This would be great for those going to and from the UK slash IE to the rest of Europe. They were 100% right, of course. Ditching mechanical connection in favor of wires enables quick moving of steering wheel and pedals to any side of the car. Theoretically, they could even move it to the back seat or let you control steering and brakes from an app on your cell phone. If Tesla wants to, they could also make the car transformable, like EV Bike Dude said. So when driving from UK to Europe, after crossing the channel, you could just move to the other seat and take the controls with you. Luke Safrit added, with all the steer, brake by wire, hopefully they could do a joystick option for off-road and for disabled people. That's absolutely right. I don't think Tesla would offer such an option but converting the Cybertruck for use by disabled people would be extremely easy. I find this exciting. Magnus Otto wrote, I remember seeing that steering concept on the 2005 Jeep Hurricane concept. Would be awesome if Tesla can get that into production. I completely forgot about that one. I just imagined what I would do had I been part of Tesla's Cybertruck team. Jeep never intended to produce this concept from 2005, but in a Back to the Future move, Cybertruck will probably make it real. I think it's extremely exciting that Elon and Tesla don't only bring their own ideas, but also know how to take other people's fantasies and turn them into a working reality. Speaking of Back to the Future, in the video I flashed for a single frame, meaning one thirteenth of a second, a picture of the Back to the Future DeLorean, and asked anyone seeing it to let me know. Credit for finding it 
goes to Oni Matsuki and Phil312. Great going, guys. Tony Devera wrote, What about bi-directional driving? If you can steer the rear wheels like the front wheels, it should be doable with the backup camera. Would be incredible for off-roading. Again, not being an off-roader myself, I didn't think of it while making the video. But Tony is right. All the hardware is there. So if Tesla wants it, it's just a matter of software to enable people to retrace their steps in reverse when the way forward is blocked or too hairy. Great feature. R. Gerald Alexander wrote, Finally, a Cybertruck design update that addresses the likely innovations. How about 800 volt motor power and 48 volt accessory power? Great questions, and I'll try to address them in my upcoming part two video, which deals with Cybertruck design. X, I am Dave X, and a few others wrote, What's the redundancy if steer by wire fails while you're driving? There's a good answer and a bad answer for this question. The bad answer is that there are numerous cases in the past where mechanical systems failed and had no redundancy. I'm not referring to parts breaking, but to cases where accidents occurred after the car's ignition switch got turned off while driving, which disabled power steering and turned off the airbag. That's just one example that falls to mind, as there were many others. Also, these systems are less prone to mechanical failure than hydraulic systems, which also reduces chances of accidents. However, it's a good and important question, and the good answer to it is that such systems are usually designed and built with full redundancy. I expect them to be no less reliable than conventional systems. Tony De Vera wrote, Another tech that could be in the Cybertruck. Liquid cooled seats. Tesla filed a patent for it back in 2019, and they filed an amendment to the patent a few months ago. This is the next logical step in integration following the seats directly mounted to the battery pack. By adding a liquid coolant loop in the seat, the seats can be heated or cooled by refrigerant pumped in from the same heat pump and thermal management system that regulates the battery and the AC. This will unlock new levels of passenger comfort, as you can dial the liquid in the seat to a specific temperature rather than just turning an electric resistive heater or fan on and off. This will be much more efficient at heating and cooling passengers, and it'll be much more energy efficient. I could see this reducing the overall need slash usage for cabin AC by quite a bit, which will save tons of energy in and of itself. That's an amazing insight. In fact, I did a whole video about that patent when I wondered out loud whether they'd use it on the Plaid. Here's a short section from it. This video will talk about the new Model S seats, but we'll also mention the Octovalve. You might wonder, what on earth have seats got to do with temperature management and the Octovalve? And my answer to that is, it's Tesla. I won't keep you waiting, so here's the bottom line. In February 2019, Tesla filed a patent application for what they called a vehicle seat with an integrated temperature control system. In other words, they invented a new way of heating and cooling car seats that gives better heating and better cooling while consuming much less energy. Tesla's engineers scored a huge triple win, and chances are that the new Model S has these seats. In this video, I'll first describe the general idea behind the patent application and the problems it tries to solve. I'll then describe the engineering behind the patent and what makes these new seats so special. I'll give my opinion on whether the new Model S uses it, and after showing what we know about the seats, I'll wrap things explaining why what we don't know is even more important, and why I can't wait for Sandy to reveal the truth. There's a link to the full video in the card above, and while Tesla didn't use it on the Plaid, Tony's right. Having the seats mounted straight on the battery pack like we saw on the Model Y does simplify the system a lot, and since using such seats would be much more efficient than cooling Cybertruck's huge cabin, there's a chance we'll see them on Cybertruck. Amir Irenpour wrote, Great video. You should have a video together with Sandy Monroe about this video. Honestly, I would love doing any video with Sandy, Corey, or anyone else from Monroe Live. Before moving to software and systems engineering, I was originally an aerospace engineer and majored in structures and manufacturing. So Sandy's videos resonate well with me, and I definitely have some interesting questions to ask if I get a chance to interview any of them. Sandy, Corey, and everyone taking part in these videos are a huge source of inspiration, and I love how they made manufacturing cool again, just like Elon made engineering cool again. Inspiring young people to go that way is important for our future. So yeah, I would love that. I'll try contacting Monroe to ask for an interview, and if anyone at Monroe is watching this, or maybe you know someone there, please DM me on Twitter at connecting no dots. Daniel Burstay wrote, in phase steering or crab walk is a great thing to have when towing. There is an incredibly dangerous circumstance that occurs when making an emergency lane change when towing a bumper pole trailer. Take, for instance, a quick swerve into a lane to your left. 
When your front wheels turn, they act like they're pushing a lever with its fulcrum at the center of the rear axle. The distance between this fulcrum and the ball of the trailer hitch makes its own little lever that pushes the trailer hitch a bit to the right, imparting a weight shift to the mass of the trailer opposite the direction you need it to go. Just as the mass of the trailer starts to the right, the rear wheels of the tow vehicle start to follow the front wheels left and immediately jerk the trailer back to the left. This quick right then immediate left action on the trailer ball causes all of the weight above the trailer axle to tip the trailer to its right. The correction back left is what starts the wild tilting tail whip that often causes the tow vehicle to spin out and the trailer to roll over. If instead the rear wheels turn in phase with the front, the whole tow vehicle and its trailer hitch head left together without that momentarily counter force. Dan is absolutely right and very well explained. Having all wheel steering will definitely make towing safer and having torque vectoring could help quickly fix possible mishaps. That's it for now. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified of the next video, an engineering analysis of less known Cybertruck design features. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a video on how GM engineers could have made GM into what we know as Tesla. But just like with EV1, GM's management killed the project. If you want to support the channel and help me make more videos, please head over to Patreon or become a member of my YouTube channel. You'll get my exclusive members-only newsletter, early access to ad-free copies of my videos, and my eternal gratitude. So head over to Patreon or join me on YouTube using links in the video description, and together we can make this channel grow. A huge shout-out to my latest patrons and YouTube members, Ward Hannigan, Byron Keck, Brian Brogmas, and Jeff Sobel. And to all my patrons, you guys rock. You can follow me on Twitter, where I am connecting no dots. And until next time, I am connecting the dots, and you are amazing.